Well, hello, everyone, and, and welcome to today's webinar, Cycle Tourism in the Biosphere and Beyond. Uh, my name is Benjamin John. I am the Climate and Energy Programs Manager uh, for the Georgian Bay Minidogami Biosphere, as well as your facilitator for today. Also joining me from the Biosphere is Emma Burton, our Climate and Youth Outreach Coordinator, who will be leading all of the tech in the background. Uh, so if you have any issues with Zoom, Emma will be able to help you and uh, just put any of those, those needs that you have um, in the chat box for Emma. Uh, please know that we will be recording today's session and posting it to our YouTube channel. We want to make this uh, session accessible to those who aren't able to make it today and also offer you the opportunity to review any of the topics that were discussed. Uh, we'll, we'll circulate this link in a follow-up after the webinar, um, but it will also be made available on GBB's website as well. We'd also like to encourage you to use the question and answer tool that Zoom offers. If you have a question at any time throughout the webinar, please place it in there. And we've dedicated some time at the end of today's uh, webinar uh, to answer your questions. Before we begin, though, I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the land on which we are on today. The Georgian Bay Biosphere is situated within the Robinson-Huron Treaty of 1850 and the Williams Treaty of 1920, located on Anishinaabek territory. Our organization under UNESCO acknowledges the rights of Indigenous peoples in this territory and works towards respectful and reciprocal relationships as we're all caretakers of the land. So once again, thanks everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, if this is your first time hearing about the Georgian Bay Minidogami Biosphere, it is one of 19 UNESCO World Biospheres in Canada. The biosphere stretches 200 kilometers along the eastern coast of Georgian Bay and was designated by UNESCO in 2004. Um, our region specifically is ecologically unique as it contains the largest freshwater archipelago or series of uh, freshwater islands on Earth. As an organization, we're a registered charity with an office located in Perry Sound. Uh, we rely on grants, partnerships, and donations to carry out the work in the fields of environmental conservation, climate action, sustainable communities, culture, and education. Um, and within these areas, it's we, we work to help inform and educate and provide leadership uh, to inspire collaborative partnerships in these areas. Um, really, the, the purpose of doing this is to build a balance between humans and nature within that Georgian Bay Biosphere region. Today's webinar is part of a larger webinar series and overall project that we have focused on zero emission vehicles. Um, and we'd like to thank the Mike Brigham Foundation and Lakeland Solutions, as well as the North Barry Perry Sound District Health Unit, as well as our other partners who have made this possible. If you enjoy today's webinar, we also have some more events upcoming in the future. Um, on, on April 13th, for example, we'll be hosting a textile repair cafe in Perry Sound, uh, where you can bring damaged clothing and textiles and, and a group of volunteers will help you repair them. Uh, then on June 6th, we'll also be holding a regional climate action format forum. And at this event, we'll be inviting local contractors, industry experts, um, as well as some others to help you learn and connect with anything related to buildings, transportation and waste. So we hope to see you at these events. Before I turn things over to our guest speakers for today, um, I just want to take a few moments to ask the audience a few questions. Um, as I mentioned, this, this webinar is part of a larger webinar series that we have focused on zero emission vehicles, which includes e-bikes. And, you know, one of our objectives um, throughout this project is to learn more about uh, people's e-bike use. So in a moment, you'll see a few poll questions come up on the screen. We have one. There we go right there. Thank you, Emma. Um, and our first question is just wondering, you know, have you rode an e-bike before? Um, yes, no, unsure. All of your responses that you put up here are totally anonymous. Uh, myself and the other panelists won't be able to see your, what you put. So we're just, yeah, curious to see if you have this experience. And we'll give it maybe 15 more seconds for people to put their responses. Okay, I'm not sure if you're able to see the results. I might be able to share it there, but we just about have an even split. So um, yeah, I'm really excited then uh, for the session today. You know, it sounds like we have people with experience, people that are just learning. So there'll be some information uh, for everybody. 
And just before we turn things over, we'll, we'll ask one more question for our next poll question. Oh, sorry, Emma, I exited that out on you. If we can put that back up on the screen one more time. So our next poll question, um, Emma, I'm not sure if the poll can come up, but we're just curious about learning more if there's something prevent from preventing you from getting an e-bike. Um, you know, we understand that there's a lot of barriers that exist. Um, I think we're having some technical difficulties. So if you'd like to respond, you're welcome to do so in the chat. Um, so with that being said, without further ado, I am very excited to introduce our, our guest speaker for today, uh, Louisa Marcel from Ontario by Bikes. Um, so welcome, Louisa, and, and thank you for joining us. I'll pass it over to you. Thanks very much. It's great to be here. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Peter McMurtry, who uh, will be setting us off. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter McMurtry. I'm a project manager with Ontario by Bike Transportation Options. Um, so today we are excited to share some information about cycle tourism, about e-bikes, um, and I'll just give you a quick overview of what we'll be talking about. So we'll be talking a little bit about our organization, Ontario by Bike. What is cycle tourism? Who are cycle tourists? Um, why, you know, this is an exciting group to welcome to your community um, and specifically talk about some recommendations for welcoming e-bike users. Uh, we'll share with you some more information about e-bike use and 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 types of e-bikes, um, being an e-bike friendly community, as well as uh, some more information about about cycle tourism in the region. Uh, next slide, please. So Ontario by Bike, uh, we are a not for profit organization. Um, we are um, basically a, a project of uh, the larger organization Transportation Options, of which uh, that is kind of an umbrella region for sustainable transportation um, projects. So the goal of the Ontario by Bike Network is to develop and promote cycle tourism in Ontario through a network of bicycle friendly businesses uh, that together enhance the region's cycle tourism product. And we also engage in a number of other project areas, um, including um, promoting cycle tourism in Ontario to consumers. So whether that's through the resources on our website or at trade shows, through our annual Cycling Ontario Guide, um, we also ho host workshops for businesses and tourism operators on becoming more bike friendly, uh, and that dovetails together with our certification program for bike friendly businesses. Uh, we do consulting work, so on, on cycling and cycle tourism destination development uh, with, with organizations like, your, like yourself or um, with municipalities, counties, uh, destination marketing organizations. We conduct research on cycle tourism, and we even host our own uh, small group tours. So a lot of different program areas that we that we uh, work in to help support cycle tourism in Ontario. Next slide, please. So um, the project is is actually over ten years old now. Ontario by bike. Um, our organization, Transportation Options, is uh, just celebrated our thirtieth anniversary uh, just uh, two years ago. Um, so this is a project that, you know, we've, we've been excited to continuously expand over the last uh, 10 plus years. It started as a pilot project in Niagara as the Welcome Cyclist Network um, and has grown into every region across the province um, now called the Ontario by Bike Network. Um, so as I mentioned, um, we've kind of added a number of different program areas across the, over the years, our tours, our annual magazine, um, our our uh, cycle tourism conference, which we hosted uh, last year and happens every three years. That's a national conference where we have uh, guest speakers from across the world. Um, yeah, and, and this year is going to be another really big year for cycling. Um, we're seeing really strong interest in our in our guide, in our online resources, uh, and also in our um, upcoming bike tours. So you know that that kind of bike boom from COVID doesn't seem to be slowing down. Uh, next slide, please. So I mentioned uh, we certify bike friendly businesses. So we do this, um, uh, this is eligible uh, to tourism oriented businesses and locations. Um, and you know, we know that this is, uh, that cyclists are visiting these locations. This is a really great win-win both for cyclists and businesses. 
Um, so we, you know, we, we also through our research, we conduct cyclotourism activity uh, data or, or research. Um, and we find that cyclists are visiting the businesses. Almost half um, of cyclists had visited one or more certified bike friendly businesses in the past two years. And many 40% have visited multiple businesses. So this helps uh, cyclists find bike friendly businesses and also helps businesses get more, um, more, con more customers and expand to, you know, a growing um, a growing tourism industry. So it's a win-win for everyone. So who can participate in the program? It's open to accommodations providers uh, and uh, also a, a range of tourism-oriented businesses. So not just your typical retail businesses, but anything um, that is tourism-related. So accommodations, uh, roofed accommodations, campgrounds, food service providers, uh, tourist attractions. So this is museums, galleries, wineries, breweries, anything that is a destination type attraction. We also certify uh, business areas, including BIAs, chambers of commerce. Um, and we also certify uh, bike friendly, bike related businesses, such as bike shops, bike tour companies, et cetera. Um, so we have a number of, uh, of certification, uh, certification criteria for each business. Uh, next slide, please. So it de differs depending on the business category, but generally um, we're looking for a secure bike lockup area. Uh, in the case of an accommodation, we this would ideally be in enclosed inside. Um, having information, a bike repair toolkit if you're an accommodation, um, healthy local food if that's applicable to your business, and then having a rest area, washrooms and water if that's something that your business is able to provide. Um, and so this, all the specific criteria per business category is available on our website. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of benefits both to consumers and to businesses as part of the program. If you're a business, um, one of the main benefits is you're expanding your web presence. Um, you basically get um, a, a uh, kind of mini web page on our website, a business directory where cyclists can find you while they're looking for local cycling information. Uh, we have it linked, basically um, a regional cycling page for all of our regions. And then from that page, uh, cyclists can click onto the regional map and see all the bike friendly businesses for that region. Um, we, you get access to a lot of uh, toolkits, information on, on uh, being a bike friendly business and marketing your business. Um, you become part of a larger network um, where there's marketing opportunities to cyclists, um, resources, and, and just a lot of benefits from being part of a kind of collective uh, group that's looking to, you know, enhance cycling in Ontario. There's a lot of additional marketing and promotions you get access to in general. Next slide, please. Great. Uh, thanks, Peter. Um, now I'd like to share some information uh, more about what is cycle tourism and who are cycle tourists. And likely many of you listening are uh, cyclists already, it seems, and uh, very possibly cycle tourists as well. So cycle tourism can really incorporate roads, trails, mountain biking, e-biking, any type of uh, cycling, uh, and it might be involve uh, destination riding. So you're going to a uh, location, staying overnight, riding out from there, returning to stay overnight in accommodations, uh, touring where you might be uh, independently organized or with a group on a multi-day trip. You might have your own support vehicle or just be traveling traveling with panniers and everything you need on your bike. There's also events and tours that people participate in. So they're traveling specifically to participate in those type of activities. There's also day riding and urban cycling. So somebody might be traveling, say, to North Bay uh, for the afternoon, enjoying what there is to do there and uh, returning home in the evening as well. So who are cycle tourists? Well, tourists in Ontario are uh, deemed as anyone traveling more than 40 kilometers away from their place of residence, not for reasons of business or education. And we uh, take that definition over to what are cycle tourists as well. Uh, there's all definitely all different types of cyclists, a wide range of ages, a wide range of abilities. Uh, when we break it down into categories, um, people are either, uh, and they can 
be not exclusive to one category. They might be out with their family in the morning and being uh, mountain biking in the afternoon with some friends. So generally leisure and family type of cyclists are um, very much um, needing safe, super safe cycling infrastructure, pretty exclusive to uh, off-road trails and maybe doing upwards to 20, 25 kilometers uh, for a single outing. Recreational cyclists tend to be interested in going a little bit further, maybe 40 to 60 kilometers in an outing, and they do have some comfort level on roads with some cycling infrastructure as well as the trails. Touring and experienced cyclists may be doing uh, 100 kilometers or more before lunchtime. Uh, often see them dressed in cycling kits, uh, lycra shorts and shirts, and riding super expensive bikes. Uh, there's also folks that travel exclusively uh, for racing and competitive type of events, uh, those type of cyclists. And there's a growing number of mountain bikers. Uh, that's a hugely popular area. People also looking to do gravel road cycling, fat bikers, which are uh, out on the trails with wider tail uh, tires on snow or sand in the summer. And all of the categories really do include e-bikes. So we conducted, sir, we done a lot of research um, and I'd like to share a little bit with you from a survey that we completed in 2023, the fall. That gives us further insight on to who are Ontario cyclists and cycle tourists. So about 49% of the people are age 45 to 64. That's the largest category. Uh, second largest are folks over the age of 65. A large percentage are retired. Um, even larger are working full time. Um, from many surveys we've seen, uh, we've taken, uh, it's generally a pretty even split between uh, males and females uh, participating in cycling activities, uh, usually higher uh, education levels as well as high household incomes. So for, as far as cycling activity, recreational cycling was the most popular type of activity reported in 2023. Um, a large number of people are returning to tours and events uh, and also increasing the number of cycling, amount of cycling they're doing or the same compared to the previous uh, time period. So what are some uh, habits and ride preferences uh, from our recent survey? Road cycling continue to be the most popular, followed by riding off-road trails, which can either be paved or unpaved. And this is similar to 2021. Uh, the ride distance per largely preferred is 46 to 99 kilometers, although 32% uh, did uh, prefer shorter distances. And uh, Ontario cyclists are frequently riding solo, but then also with uh, groups, either with clubs or uh, with friends and uh, significant others. Uh, we're also interested in collecting data on uh, when cyclists are riding, as many municipalities are uh, now making sure that their cycling infrastructure is for season available, which is in this year, definitely uh, something that is of interest. Uh, so we have taken um, some measurements of that. 24% do indicate that they are winter and year round cyclists and 62% do ride in shoulder seasons, which would be the fall and spring. So it's not just all summer, fair weather cycling. The type of bikes that are most commonly owned are road bikes, and that's uh, closely followed by uh, gravel bikes, mountain bikes, and hybrid cruisers. Uh, when we ask people how many bikes they own, and this might translate to your households as well, about 35% own two or three bikes per household. So that's not just um, exclusively to yourself if you're living solo, um, but it might include the family or whoever else is living in your household. And of particular interest to this webinar is 22% uh, already state that they own one or more e-bike within their household, and 17% are considering purchasing an e-bike in the near future. And this is comparable to data that we've collected in the past as well. 
So why welcome cyclists and e-bike users? There's uh, some great reasons to do so. Uh, our data that we've uh, been able to access through Stats Canada does show the value of cycle tourism in Ontario is quite large. So the tourism industry is huge in Ontario and contributes a lot of jobs and economic impact uh, to the province. But when you break it down into the cycling component, about $537 million is spent by tourists that participate in cycling activities while in Ontario, and that translates into about 1.6 million cycling visits. Cycle tourists spend long, spend more and stay longer than uh, non-cyclist type of visitors, about $431 per trip versus $322 per trip, uh, and 2.5 nights they're staying, which is longer than the average one point night, one night um, for non-cycling visitors. Um, from our survey, we did uh, ask what type of trips and how many trips that they are doing uh, within Ontario that included cycling. So about 58% did one or more overnight trips, and that includes 38% who did two or more trips. Uh, when you're looking at day trips, about 68% said they did three or more day trips within Ontario that included cycling. Uh, cycle tourism has some imp positive impacts on businesses uh, locally across Ontario. They support accommodations. Many cyclists prefer to stay in hotels. Uh, they're spending money at those types of accommodations, uh, generally over $150 per night on accommodations uh, are spent by cyclists. They're also spending money on food and beverage, over $26, about 55% are spending daily or on a cycling outing, uh, spending money on attractions in local communities and retail shopping as well. So here we are today to learn more about e-bikes and there's a lot of information that you might already be familiar with um, or some new information we can share with you as follows. So uh, e-bikes, uh, the definition of one can vary depending on the province that you're in, but in Ontario it is designated as a power assisted bicycle with an electric motor that has a handlebar for steering. It has working pedals, it has two or three wheels, it can be um, it has an electric motor braking system and really importantly it has a, a maximum speed <laughs> with assisted electric power 32 kilometers per hour and there's also a weight classification as well so generally this precludes the scooter type and throttle type of e-bikes so graphically, if you wanted to look at the different types of e-bikes, there's many different brands and many different types on the market in Ontario and across the world. And there's many different uses as well that can help you select the e-bike that would best suit your style. There's also lots of great benefits to using an e-bike. Uh, it can reduce um, travel. It, uh, it can help you travel further distances. So it might give you that little extra power that bikes um, without e-bike capabilities can provide. Um, it can make less car trips. Uh, you can do shorter trips and do shopping to get what you need within your communities. So more of an active transportation uh, perspective. It can also lead to active uh, holiday styles. So taking your e-bike or renting an e-bike at locations um, can get you outside. And E-bikes actually do provide exercise. Um, there might be some myths that they <laughs> don't provide as much exercise, but by going a further distance, um, it does al allow for quite an enhanced uh, exercise experience as well. And uh, we've also found with lots of our friends in our cycling community that uh, e-bikes might allow older adults to keep cycling um, beyond where they might feel comfortable on a regular bike. So where to buy e-bikes? Because there's so many out there, we always suggest to shop local, go visit a local bike store, ask them what they have. Um, they'll often let you test drive an e-bike and fit one that is best suited to your style and body type. So uh, there's many bikes on sale made in China. You can order online. It's really not something we suggest. Uh, you'll have a better service experience if you shop local. So uh, uh, there's just some lists of uh, bike stores that might be located within your area. Of course, there might be more and there might be more or, uh, where you're actually located.
So where can you ride an e-bike? Um, well, this is determined at the provincial and municipal level. Uh, really, this should be um, determined at a federal level and uh, the feds have stepped back from making these rules which make it a little harder for municipalities and provinces uh, they have now had to step into the game and make regulations for e-bikes and there's more coming uh, all the years as these uh, municipalities and, and the province gets on board with what is needed to regulate as far as e-bikes can go so in some province uh, there's regulations about being on sidewalks on certain trails um, weight limits um, but in general, you can ride an e-bike uh, mostly where you can ride a regular bike, uh, but you must follow the Highway uh, Traffic Act. So you're considered a vehicle just like a car and truck and must obey all traffic uh, signals and laws. Some e-bike stats and facts that we've gathered. E-bikes are a growing cycling and the market is anticipated to reach uh, over $52 billion US by 2030. Uh, worldwide sales in 2015 uh, were about 36 million units and that's expected to grow to about 100 million units in 2020, 2035. Um, E-bikes are particularly popular in Europe, so we're seeing that quite in advance of uh, what is happening in the USA currently, um, and where e-bikes have already jumped a huge amount in percentage of growth annually. So when you're riding e-bike, there are some specific tips and etiquette to consider. Uh, we've already mentioned you must uh, adhere to the same rules and uh, regulations as other cyclists and vehicle traffic. Um, if you're new to e-biking, very important to practice riding before you might want to go on a longer trip. E-bikes are often heavier than you might be used to, so some kind of balance practice is required. Uh, because e-bikes come with batteries, uh, there are some special storage techniques and um, charging techniques that you might want to consider as well as overwintering the battery where to store that for the winter months and also if you're traveling with your e-bike um, e-bikes are heavier than regular bikes so you might need to check the bike rack that you're using on your vehicle can carry that certain weight and also to be respectful to other riders so it might be great that you're on an e-bike and you can laugh at your friends as you're going up a hill much faster than they are um, unless they're family and or friends that are in on that joke um, it's wise to be respectful of other riders and the speeds that they are going on to so i'll turn Thanks, it Lisa. back to peter okay perfect um so i'll give you a few tips on just you know things to think think about when welcoming um, e-bike riders and how to create an e-bike friendly community so one of the big um, infrastructure pieces that is going to become, you know, going to grow very rapidly over the next over the coming years, um, is how to provide a safe and secure e-bike charging stations. So, on the next slide, I'll talk about um, some jurisdictions that are um, that are uh, looking at installing e-bike stations. But um, you know, this is something to really think about as a kind of critical piece of infrastructure. Um, so, in you know, without having de designated e-bike charging stations, allowing e-bike users to charge batteries at public facilities is a really great um, interim solution. So thinking about that, um, you know, what are your kind of community partners uh, and public facilities that, that could facilitate that? Really, it's just a matter of providing um, an outlet that is available at, at regular hours. Um, oftentimes batteries are removable from the bicycle. So it's not a matter of bringing the bike inside. It's just a matter of having a space where people can charge a, you know, a reasonably sized battery. Um, so having secure bike parking is really important, and this applies across the board to all bikes. So ensuring, you know, in the where cyclists are going, that there is safe and secure bike parking. Having information about e-bikes, so um, you know, educating the community where there are charging points, uh, where there are restrictions, um, to help you know, kind of make it easier for communities to to accept e-bikes and to understand what the rules and regulations are around that. Um, also, uh, you know, making sure that e-bikes are allowed on trails and paths. So this would be at mostly at the municipal level. Um, so allowing, you know, e-bikes um, as as active transportation to be able to go where other bicycles are going. Um, so this would be working with with your lo local municipal partners to ensure that there aren't restrictions in place for that. 
Um, so then it could be supporting or facilitating uh, e-bike rentals trials. So we know in East Ontario, there is a trail organization, Prescott Russell, uh, that is working with local uh, business providers to offer e-bike rentals along a trail. Um, so that's a really great way to get people uh, cycling more in the area and on specific trails and, and roads. Um, promoting e-bike friendly routes and then also welcoming e-bike riders to the community. So lots of ways, you know, to think about um, the soft and hard kind of infrastructure that helps uh, make e-bike riders welcome. So I talked about e-bike charging stations. So um, there's an increasing number of communities and municipalities that are installing or investigating e-bike charging solutions. Um, so in Quebec, the Eastern Townships and Montérégie regions are investigating and installing a solution provided by, I believe it's Quebec-based manufacturer Velovoot. Um, and there are other options available. Another one a bit closer to home is actually Simcoe County um, is going to be rolling out uh, e-bike charging locations on the Simcoe County Loop Trail. Um, so keep an eye out for that. They, those would be a great people to talk to, um, to kind of uh, learn from their experience if you're looking at, at kind of rolling this out in your local communities or along a specific uh, trail route or trailhead. Um, so it's important to note, you know, that, that these solutions incorporate um, some sort of locking mechanism to keep the bike secure while it's charging. Um, the VeloVoot solution actually has a locker as part of it, um, where, where cyclists can store some valuables. And I believe with that solution, they cyclists have to bring their own padlock um, for that. Um, so yeah, definitely some interesting solutions. And I'm sure as, you know, the years come on, there'll be more solutions available. Um, so other ways to encourage e-bike use, e-bike rebates is becoming a really popular um, avenue to do that. So some jurisdictions, either at the local level, uh, provincial or, um, or in some cases, national level are providing rebates. So Alberta has a program. Um, if you switch to an e-bike, if you ditch your existing car, replace it with a new e-bike. Uh, Banff has a really generous rebate as well as the city of Edmonton. And then there are other provinces that have a similar rebate program. So this is something to explore either at the local level or to encourage, say, our provincial uh, government to offer that possibly in the future. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of different elements that go into um, the kind of soft and hard infrastructure of, you know, of welcoming cyclists, building out your cycle tourism uh, destination development. Um, so it's, you know, could, everything from infrastructure uh, to services, you know, so having those bike friendly businesses in place, um, information and marketing. So making sure that, you know, information about the great cycling uh, that is available is, is published on uh, municipal or regional websites, um, you know, having that, that information readily available to people, um, you know, thinking about how people are getting to your location. So um, you're fortunate in Perry Sound, for instance, there is the via train option which does accommodate uh, bicycles, uh, which is not the case currently on the Quebec City to Windsor corridor, but we hope that that will be in place as the new vehicles are rolling out. Um, so those are the pieces that go into that, making sure you have, uh, you're have you working with your partners. So, you know, to really create a great cycling and cycle tourism destination and, and help, you know, build out um, everything you need, uh, it really needs to be a collaborative effort with, with, with all of local and regional partners as well as provincial. Um, and then at the at the destination level, you know, it makes sense to um, together with partners evaluate the existing product, assess opportunities and gaps, and uh, make strategies. Uh, thinking about all these elements on how to improve the experience. So a little bit about more about uh, you know what makes your region special, and uh, we're talking about Georgian Bay biosphere, but we're also expanding. Uh, this out to talk a little bit more about neighboring regions as well. So, you know, what are the things that are bringing people to your region? Um, you know, there's a wealth of scenic and well-developed recreational mountain bike trails, which are a huge draw. Um, it's not just summer and shoulder season cycling. You know, it really is a four season cycling destination, um, including some of those winter fat biking destinations. I know in, in Perry Sound, um, as well as other places, there are some great places to do that. Um, there's a great collection of on-road cycling routes as well as cross-regional routes, which I'll mention uh, in a future slide. Um, having communities close to routes and trails, that's really important. Having engaged uh, community and partners, so bike stores, cycling groups, clubs, you know, there's a number of different groups that are active in this space 
um, that are really making the experience better and helping helping to develop those trails, those routes. Um, as well as I mentioned, there's a lot of great transportation options to get in and out of your region. Uh, next slide. So I won't go through all these, but but just this is an example of some of the great road cycling routes that are available. So in the Perry Sound area, Magnetowan, as well as neighboring um, Muskoka and Manitoulin Island. Um, there's quite a bit of information available. The Bike Cottage Country website is a great resource for uh, road cycling routes um, to check out. And that is uh, a big draw for people. That's, that's bringing a lot of cyclists to the region and, and giving them resources and routes for them to check out while they're there. And as I mentioned, we, um, for these regions, we actually have uh, regional Great Places to Cycle pages for the region, for the, um, all the destinations in your region. So Perry Sound, and El Maguin, uh, Muskoka and Algonquin, uh, we as well as uh, Manitoulin and La Cloche, we have specific pages with all the road cycling routes uh, listed on our website with the links below. Next slide, please. The great trails, as I mentioned, so um, Rotary Algonquin Fitness Trail and Perry Sound. Um, there's some other great, other great uh, trails, destination trails. Um, for mountain biking, winter fat biking. Uh, this is Seguin Recreational Trail that makes up the Park to Park Trail. Bosley Island has a great collection of kind of scenic unpaved trails. And then there's also the uh, Old Nipissing Road, which is just east of your region, but is part of the Trans-Canada Trail route. Next slide, please. So one way cyclists are gonna be coming through your region um, and is also a big draw, you know, some of the kind of cross regional cycling routes. So there's the Trans Canada Trail, which comes very close. There's the Park to Park Trail, which runs from Kilbear uh, east to Algonquin. Um, there's the Great Lakes Waterfront Trail, which is, the route is currently um, in, it's not fully signed um, uh, and it doesn't, it's not currently, um, I guess, completed, but the route is there, suggested on the website, um, and that does include um, along the Georgian Bay uh, coastline, as well as in the Muskoka region, some loops around uh, the larger lakes there. And then close by is also the Voyager cycling route, uh, which is a developing route from Sudbury to North Bay to Mattawa and Ottawa. So another great resource uh, that cyclists can take advantage of are Ontario by bike ride itineraries. Um, so one uh, not too far from you is uh, the North Bay and Lakes tour. This is a tour we ran um, uh, last summer as part of our Ontario by bike rides, our weekend tours. And every time we um, publish a tour, we, we, we complete a tour, we publish that itinerary online. Um, so, you know, some exciting de new destinations for this year. We're going to be launching those soon, um, you know, and this is something something to consider. Perhaps, you know, we could bring a future ride to your region. Um, if you have any ideas, we're definitely open to hearing about those. Um, but, you know, having having these kind of cycling itineraries is a great way to, to bring cyclists to your region and also to kind of keep them uh, there for multiple days. Having sort of a set itinerary is really important. Next slide, please. So I mentioned this before, but our uh, our annual guide, the Cycling Ontario Guide, is now available. It's our 12th annual edition. Uh, we do include uh, your region in the guide. Um, in uh, So we basically have feature stories. So one of our features is um, using uh, provincial national uh, parks as basis for day rides. So we do mention uh, Beausoleil Island in one of our feature articles and the great trails there. We also feature over 50 day and overnight itineraries uh, region by region in the back of the magazine in our uh, ride, uh, ride guide for that. So if, you are, um, if you'd like to receive some copies for distribution, definitely uh, reach out to us for that. Um, it is a very popular magazine and first and foremost, it is a free magazine. Uh, so that is something you know, that really helps cyclists find places to cycle. It's a magazine they can flip through on their couch while they're at their home. Um, and we do also distribute this further field uh, as it is available both in French and English. So take a look at the link below uh, to learn more about that guide. So also of particular interest in uh, this year's magazine is our, uh, we have an article called Top E-Bike Trail Rides. So basically we took, um, you know, kind of signature trails uh, experiences across the province and and found which are the ones which have uh, e-bike rental locations uh, close to or adjacent to the trails. 
Um, you know, this is something that we get asked about at trade shows at uh, when we when we meet with cyclists. Um, and this is a really great way to try out an e-bike, uh, you know, before you're ready to buy. So, you know, don't, don't even necessarily have to have um, a bike rack that is capable of carrying one. You can rent an e-bike and then just hop right on the trail and have a great experience that way. Um, so probably the closest one to your region would be the Georgian Rail Trail. Um, but I understand uh, Perry Sound uh, Bike Shop also does rent e-bikes. So, so that would be relatively close to the trail, the Waterfront Trail in uh, Perry Sound. Next slide, please. So we've uh, finished a little bit uh, under schedule, which is, which is great for questions and comments. Um, so at this point, um, perhaps we'll bring back uh, Benjamin and Emma uh, see if there are any comments or questions in the chat, and then um, we can first address those. Benjamin, if you if you maybe would want to, if there are any in the chat, maybe just say those out loud to us, and we can we can do our best to answer those, and then we we'll, we can open up the floor after that. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Peter and Louisa, and and that's exactly right. If anybody has any questions, please put those in the chat, and we'll be happy to get to those. Um, Maybe a question I have for, for both of you. Um, have you had the opportunity to, say, bike in any of these trails that you mentioned? Um, and if not, what is one of your favorite trails in Ontario to, to bike on? Hmm. Louisa, do you want to take this one first? Sure. Um, so Peter did mention, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to ride on most of the trails in Ontario. Um, Peter just mentioned the uh, Georgian Trail, which goes from Collingwood to Meaford, and it also goes south on a differently named trail towards Stainer. Uh, yeah, that was definitely one of my highlights last summer. You get gorgeous views of Georgian Bay. You pa pass by some provincial parks. Uh, you can go into communities and stop for at bakeries um, and local food stops and enjoy the uh, escarpment behind you. Um, that's definitely one of my favorite trails. Also the Thousand Islands uh, Parkway is another paved trail that's very enjoyable. So if you're new to e-biking, um, it's a great one to try out. Peter, do you have a favorite? <laughs> yeah, um, of those, I, I really enjoy um, both the, the Niagara River Recreational Trail is really, really enjoyable. Um, that's a fully paved trail. Um, I've done the entire trail in different in different sections, um, but from you know Ni Niagara in the lake to Niagara Falls is is really nice. You get some different water views. Um, you get to see you know the hydroelectric dams, and then of course you get um, the kind of attractions of Niagara Falls and Niagara in the lake. Um, the Millennium Trail is really enjoyable in Prince Edward County, um, and then another trail I, I really enjoyed, which was new to me um, from an Ontario by bike ride a couple of years ago, was the uh, Dundas to Brantford Rail Trail. You kind of go right through uh, the Niagara Escarpment. Um, and then once you're closer to, to Brantford, you're on these beautiful kind of elevated uh, river trails just beside the Grand River. Um, but I mean, every all the trails in Ontario are, are really scenic. And um, yeah, I think, you know, being off the road is, is a really enjoyable experience. Um, you know, just being able to ride beside your friends and kind of chat. Yeah, and everything is good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've, I've I've walked a lot of the trails that you mentioned in our region, but I haven't had a chance to to you know take an e-bike or a mountain bike on them yet. So something hopefully for this summer. Uh, our next question was: um, Would it be possible to share these slides with uh, participants today? I'll I'll ask answer a first part. Um, just so everybody knows this webinar is being recorded and it's going to be made available uh, on our YouTube channel. So there is that option of viewing the slides, but Peter, Louisa, is it possible for us to share the slides and a follow-up email with everyone after as well? Of course, uh, we'll make sure that there's a PDF copy available that uh, you can distribute. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, are there any other questions? If so, please put that in the Q&A box. We'll give you maybe a minute or so. We got one here. Uh, as a board member for our local mountain bike society, we would love to have this to share with our members and potential local supporters. So just, I guess, a comment there. So thank Great. you. We'll give it another 30 seconds if there's any more questions. 
Um, I'll just while, make a comment. Um, yep. Our program to certify businesses as bicycle friendly uh, is a great opportunity for the local community to jump on board. Um, I know there are a number of businesses already certified in the Perry Sound area and the larger Muskoka area, but there's certainly room for more. So if you are a representative um, or a business um, owner or have outreach into the community let them know about becoming certified as bicycle friendly it's free to do and we're here to assist our emails on the screen um, if you're a cyclist make the most of these businesses we do have listed um, they've met certain criteria and they would love to welcome you to their locations mm -hmm. well i'm not seeing any more questions so for everyone in the audience today, if there are any follow-up questions, um, as I mentioned, the, the slides will be circulated afterwards and there is contact information here. So um, please feel free to reach out to myself or Louisa and Peter. Um, but Peter, Louisa, we also wanna thank you once again for joining us today. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us and, and your experiences with us as well. And it's been a pleasure having you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you on the bike this summer, if not before. <laughs> Likewise. And thank you, everyone, today for uh, tuning in as well. Appreciate your time. Thank you.